Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Frenzy Extra. A little bit new look this year. I'm Andy Lacombe, joined alongside by Kevin Shea and Worcester Telegram Gazette Sports Editor, Home Team Magazine's Jim Wilson. These two guys are get used to talking throughout this Frenzy Extra the last couple of years. Now we're going to give them a little bit more time to talk. It is just what you, the viewer at home, wants. We're going to start with a little bit of a debate that I think is going around in central Massachusetts, and it's teams are getting smaller. Programs are getting smaller. Is participation in football, it is declining, at least it seems that way. The question is, what is the future like if we keep seeing teams get smaller and smaller? Yeah, Willie, you go You're the guest. I'm now. the guest. I'm, I'm just, the, the Poochie's money's paying off. we got the new set. <laughs> We're getting, this is great. It's all, I, I, I get a chair I can fit in. It's fantastic. <laughs> that is awesome. I can't wait for this year's Frenzy Extra. We're getting rings and necklaces oh, next week. Turnover yeah. chains. Turnover chains for everybody. That's exactly right. Well, so, like but, but participation, I mean, I think that, that's the problem. I think it's, it, you hear about the NFL, the numbers going down. It's going down everywhere. Uh, you know, there's a new generation of parents this year. So it's like, what do you want? your kids to do? Do you want to play football and everybody's scared of concussions? And you know what I think a big thing is above all else, there's more options. I mean, when we were growing up, I mean, my, I grew up in North Bro, we didn't have Pop Warner. I had to go to Marlboro. I played Pop Warner over there for years until I went to the high school that you played freshman football. And now, now I think you have between, if, you, if it's not football, it's lacrosse, it's travel baseball, it's soccer. My kids are playing uh, you know, flex football for the Worcester Cowboys, which my, my son's playing. You know, so he's getting into it. But other than that, I mean, there's more options for the kids this year. So I think when parents look at well, what's safer for their kids, maybe football's not their first, first reaction. Yeah, the problem is, and the, what I see is that other than the top two divisions, you have division uh, three and four, the next four divisions, every team with few exceptions, BVT and Leicester and Northbridge have good numbers, but everyone else is in the 20s or low 30s. So how do you maintain a program? How do you have a freshman team? How do you have a JV team and a varsity team? If you don't have those three programs, you're in trouble because freshmen shouldn't play varsity with very, very few exceptions. Once every five, 10 years, you get a freshman who's physically and emotionally mature enough to play varsity football. Other than that, freshmen should be by themselves. I had a trainer tell me of a, of a top division three school said, look, at, we think these freshmen are, are there. Emotionally, they're not. These kids, half of them go home and watch Teletubbies. Like, they're not emotionally equipped and mature enough to play against seniors and juniors, and you're going to crush them, and you're going to lose five or six kids every year if you don't have a freshman program. And, Willie, you and I talked about this. Every coach will tell you, freshman year, they'll look at their team, and they'll say, pick five kids and say, those kids have no shot. Right. They'll never play for me. And you know what? The kid falls in love with the weight room. The kid grows. The kid matures. And lo and behold, those five or six kids are starting for him as seniors on the varsity, maybe the leaders on that team. If you don't have that... If you don't have a JV team for your sophomores to play on, you know, if nothing else, it's the carrot one day a week you get to play against kids your own size. Because you get beat on in practice every other week because you're playing against the varsity. But one day a week you get to play JV against kids your age and your size. Without that, how do you do it? How do you maintain a team in a program when you have 20 kids, 30 kids, and everyone has to play? If you don't play in the varsity, that's it. Now you practice for five more days well, with what, seniors and juniors. When should tackle football Begin. You said flex football. Uh, maybe you can explain that for a second. But there's, you know, Millbury High School. Take that. They're a small school. They used to be a co-op right. program with Sutton. There's about 25, 30 kids in the program. 17 are juniors. So outside of that class, they don't really have a team that can that could feel enough kids to feel the football team. What they do to try to get kids into football in Millbury and Sutton is they do a flag football well through it, the elementary school. They don't want you. They don't want them hitting and into the pop warners necessarily. You get into that, and then they can teach them the right way to do the hitting, the right way to tackle, things like right. that. Exactly. When should when, I mean should should that begin in high school or middle school, or that's should it be early? My, my son's eight years old. He's playing flex football, which is basically flag football. Okay. But they have like a soft helmet and a soft shoulder pads on. But he's on team butterfly chaser. He's not. He's not. I'm not putting him on a super <laughs> team anytime soon. I love him to death. <laughs> but I mean, but I think he has kids that you know the, that age. They're real kids. You look at the kids. I, I, he was on the team last year at the Cowboys. The kid was playing, coming early to play with kids two years older than him because he was just that good. You knew he was going to be the guy that was the, the benchmark for that. That's going to be a one good player. You know, like, you know, you're talking about him six years from now, saying, I watched that kid play this. Right. But, I mean, they're not, they're not doing contact. They're not doing anything. They're learning the, the basics, the fundamentals. And it's basically just, you know, they snap it, they run a sweep around the end, and everybody just runs to that guy. And maybe right. he makes a couple cuts and he's gone. 
But I mean, they're, they're not, they're learning the game early. It's more of a fostering a love for the game. Is this something they want to do when they get older? And you want to keep them on. Then they, they, don't, they, don't, they don't get into pads in a couple of years. Then they'll start hitting kids. There'll be weight, weight limits in each league and things like that. And that's when it gets into a more substantial right. area. But like you said, does, well, it's, yeah. what, how many towns have that kind of thing? Well, the football is the one sport where you can, you can just start as a freshman. You can never play football beforehand, unlike any other sport. And you can come out as a freshman and you can learn. And you'll be behind for a couple weeks or maybe a month, but you catch up quickly. Right. And so I would say whenever the kids want to play tackle football, like I, if it was up to me, I would say play flag until you get to high school or maybe 7th right. and 8th grade. If the kid wants to play in 7th and 8th grade tackle, then go play tackle. But there's no reason a third grader or a second grader, to me, should be playing tackle football with all the pads on and starting in July or the first week of August and going through November because your, your season's longer than a Division One college. All you're going to do is turn those kids off to the sport. But in terms of when, they can start whenever. Yeah. But you get numbers like, I mean, Holy Name has 24 kids. Yeah. You're practicing a half line. Like they're practicing, okay, we got a left guard and a left tackle and our tight end and center. We don't have anyone on the right because we need to get a good look from our scout well, that's guys. What it comes down so to. now here's our best three remaining linemen on the left side. How do you even run a that's program like that? That's what we talk about these smaller teams. And they're forced. To, they're using tackling dummies and garbage bags turned over right. to, to, to run a scout team. And they have the assistant coach who used to play three years ago at Anna Maria. He's out there running the, the look the quarterback. Right. How much of a look are you getting? You're playing a double wing team this weekend. How many how many good looks are you getting as a true double wing? You're not getting. It's, it's almost a waste of time for these guys to go in there and try to play when they're playing against freshmen and sophomores who don't who don't really have a concept of what they're doing. Yet. Right. They're not getting a good look. And you go, like you said, you said earlier about how that we actually have a freshman that can play. But after three or four weeks of playing, what about a Division one, Division three guy who's stuck? We're going to get St. John's this week, yeah. Wachusett next week, Lemison the next week. We said all every year we say about, you know, when Auburn had that wagon team, people are saying, well, they should be playing these guys because, you know, they should be playing the Wachusett. They should be playing. The, that's fine. They'll play good for one week, but then they got to play next week with losing three guys right. in the starting mm -hmm. line. And they're playing that 150-pound sophomore at tackle now because their 350-pound road grader got hurt. That's when you start seeing these get the, 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 the depth really, really But why, right. why is participation down? Safety? Safety concerns? Yeah, I think, it's, I think it's a ton of things. Yeah. I but think it's not just safety. I think it's what Willie said. It's fall baseball. It's, it's year-round. Right. Yeah, year-round every like sport. Every, yeah, so many more options now for kids. It's the, not just play one season and then go to the next sport. The safety thing, though, is it, isn't it not safer to play football now than, say, when you two guys Oh, much. Yeah. were playing it? I yeah, think it's, it's much safer now. Right? I mean, with they the new trainers, tackling styles, trainers, the trainers, the helmet style. technology. Yeah. They're I mean, worried about, you know, concussion protocol oh, and things yeah. like that. If, if you... You, you know, that we all play with the kids who get their lights knocked out, you know, and you know it. They get their bell rung three, and they're still in a cliche still this day. Yeah. It's just <laughs> it's a, walking, yeah. it's a walking concussion. That's what it comes <laughs> out. It's just concussion. Yeah. No, it is much safer today. Yeah. But I right. think that what you're going to have to see is football is going to have to get creative. Like yeah. the high school is going to have to get creative. You know, St. Peter, Mary, and the Holy Name, uh, they're probably going to have to co-op soon. Yeah. You know, Burncoat and Worcester Tech could co-op. If they co-op, now you can have a freshman JV right. and varsity team. North and South, co-op. Now you can have a freshman JV varsity team, and you can have 60, 70 kids in the program. Kids can be at the level they should be at. Which versus, also makes it safer. You're right. right. For it everybody does. Involved. It does make it safer. Yeah. Okay. Uh, last 30 seconds here. Future football. Are we okay? We're going to be I doing think, the Frenzy Extra uh, in five I years? Think we're, no, I think we're fine. I it's think just, we're fine. It's a, it's a thing right now. It's in, the, it's in vogue. Talk about, we'll be talking about it in five years. How is you know, there's too many players. They need to, you know, they, they, they separate North and Doherty. <laughs> you know what? And the co-op of St. Peter, Mary, and Holy Name. Once they win, right, then teams. But you do that. You co-op St. Peter's and Holy Name, and now they're playing at Division Three. Now they're playing Wachusett, right. Lemonster, okay. and St. John's. All right, well, we have to cut this part of the discussion there. When we still don't have enough time. Well, we're time. coming back. There's another, another element and another break coming up. Well, but we'll come back with Jim and Kevin, and we will talk about some of the surprise teams in Central Mass so far through three weeks of the regular season. Stay with us on the Frenzy Extra.